a part of your Bible study or Abrahamic religion text study or even any ancient mythos, you should understand what figurative language is. Figurative language is when a word means something other than its literal meaning. The importance of that is because oftentimes things can be taken out of context because we understand it literally. For example, saying how something is hot or saying how something is fly. If the shirt is hot, that doesn't necessarily mean you're hot in the shirt or the shirt is actually hot. If I say, oh, you look fly, that does not mean you are flying. It looks like you're about to fly away. Even now, we speak so colorfully, we don't understand that those who came before us did the same thing. However, this needs to be a disclaimer. Who wrote something and who actually put the text together are two different things. So while you look at this this message, this sentence, this parable, and you take it as one thing, it could have four or five different meanings. And this is why figurative language is important. So we can understand the bigger picture. So we can understand multiple dimensions, multiple sides. Okay, so first up, the first two terms are terms that are uh, figurative language types that are most known, simile and metaphor. A simile is the comparison of two unlike things using like or as. A metaphor is the comparison of two or more things without using the terms like or as. Next up is personification. Personification is a figure of speech that gives an object or an animal human-like characteristics, thoughts, feelings, attitude, you know. Moving on to hyperbole. A hyperbole is a figure of speech that uses exaggeration to express humor, to evoke emotion, or to get a point across. Next up is automatopoeia. An automatopoeia is a word that mimics its sound. Next is alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds. So this one is actually one of my favorites. Idiom. Idiom is a common, often used expression that doesn't quite make sense if taken literally. Figurative language part two. Imagery. A description that appeals to the senses. Sight, sound, smell, taste, touch. Now this is a really good one. Irony. Irony is a contrast or discrepancy between what is stated and what is really meant, between what happens and what is expected to happen. This next one was pretty much the reason why I decided to focus my studies on understanding the codex, um, biblical studies, understanding the codex, because there's so much symbolism that we miss our bias allows us to miss the symbolism. Symbolism, a person, place, or object which has meanings within itself, but it has other meanings as well. Next up is pun. A pun is a word that has similar sounds or it's one word with multiple meanings. With the word contradictory thrown around so much, this is a really good one, an oxymoron. An oxymoron is a figure of speech that combines opposite or contradictory terms in a brief statement or sentence. This next one we use quite often and honestly, we usually, we know we're doing it, but we don't know we're actually doing it. And that's euphemism. A euphemism is an indirect way of saying something that is kinda unpleasant. This last one is just as important as symbolism because oftentimes, because this type of figure of speech is used, we overlook a lot of things. Talking about context, something being taken out of context or missing a message, this figure of speech is what does that. It trips us. And that's understatement. An understatement is a figure of speech that's employed by writers or speakers that takes something and it makes it seem 
less important than what it is.